Hello and welcome to another edition of Drives Inside Line. This week we look at the future of Mazda engine technology and a hybrid that can fake it like Meg Ryan. But first, it's a big news week for the Commodore, after Holden gave Australia's best-selling car its first styling revisions in four years. There are some modifications to the large car's exterior, but Richard, I think it's fair to say that the most obvious changes have been made to the interior. That's right, they sort of brought the Commodore into the 21st century, if you like. It's got iPod connection, Bluetooth, and it's also got a system where you can put your favourite 15 CDs into the audio system and, and store them there. And, so, and every Commodore is going to get the, the touchscreen system from the base level and make that, it all the way to the range topping. That's increase. right, that's right. And there are some other subtle changes, you know, there's a, a, a bit more sort of uh, bling and, and the mm. dash is, has been redone and it actually looks quite nice. Um, hard to tell until we see it in the flesh, mm. but it looks like a step in the right direction yeah. for the car. And another step in the right direction, there's uh, improvements in fuel efficiency, only kind of sort of slight. But we're still waiting for official power figures and consumption figures for the E85 blend Commodores. That's right. They've told us some things about the new Commodore, but they won't tell us other things. They've told us they've got this wonderful E85 engine, but they won't tell us how much fuel it uses. And we all know it's going to use considerably more fuel than the petrol Commodore. So. Oh. Interesting stuff. Yeah, and another controversial point is that the Statesman has followed the fourth Ford Fairlane. It has. It's gone to the um, the old knackers yard, as they say mm. in Australia. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean that type of vehicle, the long wheelbase sort of limousine style of vehicle, is really going out of um, out of fashion these days. And uh, yeah, it's another one that's sadly fallen by yeah. the wayside. But the Caprice uh, stays on. They still have a long wheelbase Commodore. That's right. And they, they say that the Caprice was by far the most popular mm. choice among those people that were buying those cars. So they're saying no great loss. But it is another nameplate that's um, consigned to history, unfortunately. That's right. Well, there'll be no chop for Mazda's distinctive rotary engine. The company invited Drive to a technology event in Europe this week. And Richard, it seems that the Wankel is alive and well. <laughs> it certainly <laughs> is, Jim. Yes, it is. Now, um, what they... They have said that they're going to um, re relook at this whole mm. engine and, and and basically try to make it more efficient because it's a great engine, but it actually uses about as much fuel as a V8. Mm. So um, they've really got to get that under control before they can bring that out, out again. And it looks like they're going back mm. to the drawing board, looking for big efficiency changes, and then coming back with a with a new model. That's right. But of course, they're also using this event to sort of showcase new petrol and diesel uh, engines for the future for a sort of about five years' time. Yeah. So uh, what, what what are we to make of those? Well, I, I guess they've they haven't been caught flat-footed, but they haven't got a hybrid. They haven't got an electric car program in in any great shape or form. Yeah. And what they're saying is that they can make more of an impact on the environment by making these cars that are accessible to the public, um, but still 30% more fuel efficient. So, and that's their sort of roadmap for the future. I think they've been forced by the popularity of the hybrids and all the press and um, hype surrounding them to come out and say, hey, guys, don't forget us. Well, that's right. I mean, it's clear that I think uh, there's a few car makers that are saying the internal combustion engine has still got many, many years to go yet. That's right, especially when you look at some of the um, uh, Volkswagen decisions to go to turbocharging mm. where you can g squeeze a lot more power out of a more efficient engine. Well, Toyota, of course, has been selling petrol electric cars since the 1990s. Its most famous hybrid, the Prius, is renowned for being one of the quietest cars on the road. But last week, the car maker introduced a new option to make it noisier. Richard, tell us about this new system. Well, we've, we've had this problem with Prius and with other hybrid cars. Where they're very silent at low speeds around car parks and places where pedestrians typically mingle with cars. Oh. So what they've done is they've made an artificial noise so you can hear this Prius coming as you're doing your shopping or crossing the yeah. road. And of course, so that the, the Prius can run up to about 60 kilometres an hour just on its uh, electric motor alone, which is what's making it quiet. But so, right. my, so my understanding with the new option is that it's a, kind of like a, it's a speaker device at the front of the car and it basically emits this uh, artificial sound Mm. Only up to about speeds of 25 kilometres an hour, but I mean, yeah. you know, that, that's got to help for pedestrians with low vision or particularly the blind. That's right, it's a bit like a Mr. Whippy van, you can hear it coming. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> anyway, that's it from Inside Line this week. For all your news and reviews for motoring, go to drive.com.au.